the rail is not is essentially proprietary. It is not compatible with a Remington 700. So you can't take a rail for a Remington 700 and use it with a mousing field. It won't work. Uh, you need to use an American rifle rail. And the reason for this is I wanted to design a connection or I wanted to design a means of connecting the rail to the receiver that was that is every bit as secure as an integ integrably machined rail yet offers the flexibility of being able to remove one rail and replace it with another having a different angle of inclination. So, for instance, if you have if you're running a 30 MOA rail in a scope having or uh, with a scope having a uh, 34 millimeter tube and elevation uh, adequate for a 100 yard zero or eleva enough ele elevation adjustment for 100 yard zero you're good to go but if you at some point in the future if you want to change the scope uh, to one having a 30 millimeter tube and less elevation adjustment you might have to switch the 20 MOA rail. I didn't want you to be encumbered uh, by an integrally machined rail. We've been selling scope rings for quite some time and people ask for a lot of different stuff and they change their mind so I, I wanted that flexibility to be there. That part was easy. Getting that was no problem, right? You just make them out of two pieces. Having them be as secure, or right, making a designing connection that as, as secure as an integrally machined rail, uh, that was a little bit more difficult. But the way the way I did it is I designed a key into the top of the receiver, the walls of which are tapered by two two degrees. The underside of the rail has a slot machined into it, and the walls of the slot are also tapered by two degrees, so that when you place the rail on the receiver and you bolt it down using five. Uh, number eight by 36 uh, by quarter inch long socket head cap screws you essentially draw the rail down onto the key creating an interference fit and, and that is a very very secure connection uh, the rail is effectively immobilized by the key the screws simply hold it down onto the receiver and here's an example of this here the rail is uh, basically uh, it was bolted to the receiver the bolts have now been removed and you can see that the receiver still you know the rail is still attached to the receiver separating the two oh man, requires a considerable force uh, as you can see I pulled pretty hard there to get them apart in some instances I can't get them apart like that and sometimes I'll just uh, use the inertia of the receiver, basically set it up just like this where I attach a scope ring to the rail and uh, the two would sort of be like that and then I'll just bang them on the table, the inertia and the receiver will break it loose from the rail. It's like breaking any other taper. Uh, it takes a considerable amount of force to do so. So you, you may be, or you may have experienced failures with other scope mounting systems that just predominantly rely on friction to hold the scope mount in place upon the receiver because there's basically there's a lot of clearance between the screws and the holes in the rail and uh, due to the cyclical nature of the loads imparted to the mounting system or the scope mounting system it's conceivable that this sort of thing can come loose however with this design um, the key effectively immobilizes the rail on the receiver so that there's no micro motion between the two under load and all the screws have to do is hold it down. There's, there's, there's no tendency for the screw to come loose. So it's extremely secure, it's flexible, but you do whatever you want. It's pretty good in that regard.